Listen, I want you to push that share button. I want you to tell somebody else, tag somebody, tag some friends, tag some family members, and let them know that we are here for Bible study tonight at New Grace Tabernacle Christian Center. Amen. God is going to bless us tonight through the word. Amen. God is going to have his way. So I'm going to pray. Father God, have, have your way tonight. Move in this place in a mighty way, God. We need you. We need you to move, God. Somebody needs a word from you. Somebody needs a touch from you. Somebody tuned in just in nick of time for a word from the Lord. So God, I pray right now that you have your way through every laptop through every tablet, through every phone, wherever this is being viewed. Somebody's in their home, somebody's 
in their uh, living room. Somebody's in their kitchen preparing dinner. Somebody's on their way home from work, from a hard day at work. Somebody's in their car on their way to work. Somebody's at the job. But God, I want you to move like never before through the airwaves. Let this word go forth with power in the mighty name of Jesus so that we can say that it was good that we were tuned in. We bind every spirit, every demonic spirit that wants to attach itself to this live broadcast. We bind every demonic spirit that wants to come against the word of God and the word of truth. We come against anything that's not like God. We come against anything that's contrary to the word of God. Strengthen your manservant tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen, amen, amen. As you can see, I am not in the studio today, but I am in the church house because I've been working here at the church, just doing some finishing touches here at New Grace Tabernacle. And I'm telling you, this place has come a long way. Uh, we just put a new coat of wax and stuff. They did some, doing some new waxing on the floor. And it is going to look amazing by the time you get here. I'm so glad for everyone that was able to come and celebrate with us on this past Sunday, our grand reopening here at New Grace Tabernacle. And we were able to feed, uh, I think we fed over 80 people yes, uh, on Sunday, Sunday. But I'm more excited because we were feeding 55 people at one time. Thank God our fellowship hall has been expanded. And it looks beautiful. Our Timothy Wright Memorial Hallway of Fame is amazing. And we thank God. We thank God. Listen, God gave me this word. And um, he, he, he gave me this because I was looking at so many things and so many people in the church, in the house of God, the saints. Amen. And... So many people will rather, uh, they leave churches, they leave relationships, they depart from friendships, they cut off and all of these things. But some of this stuff is because we don't know how to deal with conflict. Amen. Amen. We don't know as saints of God how to deal with conflict. So God gave me a word tonight and we're gonna study the scriptures and we're gonna talk about conflict resolution according to the scriptures, according to the word of God, amen? Conflict resolution, amen. And some of us, we really need to do some work on how we resolve things. You know, and I'm going to give you the word of God. I'm going to give you the scriptures tonight on how we as the people of God. Now, I ain't talking about the world, but I'm talking about us that say we saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost. How are we supposed to handle conflict? And I got news for you. I don't know if you want to hear this kind of news tonight, but I got some news for you. As long as we're human... As long as we're human beings, we will have conflict with one another. As long as we are human and there's blood running warm in our veins, we will have conflict. We will have disagreements. And every disagreement doesn't mean somebody's full of the devil. Every disagreement does not mean that somebody's demon possessed. There will be some disagreements with your brother or your sister in Christ. But God gives us instruction on how we should handle that. Amen, somebody. And, and I want to go to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1. Amen. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. It just feels good to be in the house of the Lord one more time amen isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 and we pray that all is well hallelujah isaiah 1 
verse 18, and it says this. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And this is the word of God. This is God telling, uh, 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 telling the people, telling Judah, look, come, let us reason together. And sometimes, look, you got to just say to somebody, look, let's come, come to some kind of agreement here. Let's come to some kind of reasoning here. Amen, somebody. He said, let us reason together. God is telling Judah to examine the case against them, make the necessary corrections. If they correct the situation, then they would be forgiven. That's why he said, come, let us reason together. But there are some people who don't want to reason. There are some people who you can't reason with. Some people don't want to reason together. Some folks are satisfied with their disagreement. And they don't want to reason. They don't want to fix the problem. Because a lot of times when we have disagreements and when we have a, a conflict, somebody got to fix something. Hallelujah. Somebody got to uh, adjust something and you have some people in your life in your church at your job in your family that don't want to do no adjusting that's why god told them look look at what you're doing let's reason together if you come and you correct some of the things that you're doing and you do these things then i will forgive you you got to be like god said come let us reason together and so many people rather walk away and never say another word than reason together. They, they, they're so tough with everything else, but they don't want to come together man to man, woman to woman. Oh, Lord, no, don't let me bomb nobody. Man to man, woman to woman, leader to leader, and reason together. If we reason together, if we come to the table and reason together, how many relationships would have been saved? How many people wouldn't have left the church? How many marriages would have stayed together? Oh, come on here, somebody. How many families wouldn't have broke up? But because we don't want to reason together. Reason together mean I might have to bend, you might have to bend. But if we bend the right way, we can still get this thing together. But some folk don't want to hear none of that. They are 100% right and everybody else is 100% wrong. Listen, I got news for you. Very rarely are you 100% right. You might be 90% right. But that other 10%, let's reason around that. Oh God. Help me, Holy Ghost. Listen, I need you to share this with somebody because it, we, we about to touch on some things that I should have taught on a long time ago. Yes, we're about to touch on some things that I should have taught on a long time ago. So many people have left ministries, not just this church, but left ministry because they would not reason together. There are some stubborn leaders that don't want to reason with people. There are some stubborn people in the pews that don't want to reason with each other. There are some stubborn people in the auxiliaries that don't want to reason. Come, let us reason together. Let's figure this out. But some of us, instead of figuring it out, we just run from everything. Yeah, we just run from everything. All right, let me get Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. Oh, I love the word of God. <clears throat> Proverbs 17 and 17, it says this. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Watch this. Even in your conflict... There should still be love. Oh God, I love you. Even when you can't reason. Even when, the, even when there's a disagreement, there should still be love. That's why the Bible says a friend loved at all times. Should nobody fall out of love because of a disagreement. 
All right. <laughs> Should nobody fall out of love because of a disagreement, because of an argument, because of different difference differences? Oh, I, oh, that, oh, that's how. We, we, you don't agree with me, so I don't love you no more. If that is the case, then there was never love in the first place. Somebody that's so easy to fall out of love with you because of a disagreement, the devil is a liar. That means there was nothing there in the first place. And, and let, let me talk about in marriages. That's why some states right now, you, you can't get divorced because of irreconcilable differences. They won't allow a divorce for that. Certain states right now in the United States of America, you cannot get divorced because of the irreconcilable differences. They really want you to work that out. Now, infidelity and abuse and stuff, they, they'll sign a divorce on that. But irreconcilable differences, you're going to walk away from your marriage, from your vows, because she liked chocolate ice cream and you like vanilla? You can come together and reason with that. You ain't got to fall out of love because of a flavor of an ice cream. And if you come together and they, okay, look, is there a way that we can make this work? Now in the supermarket, they got vanilla ice cream and chocolate ice cream together, slit like right down the middle in one container, half and half. Look at God. But you wouldn't even know that if you're not willing to reason. You wouldn't even know that if you're not willing to do, go through some conflict and get past the conflict. Somebody say amen. So many of us run away from things because we're afraid of conflict. We're afraid, but you're not really afraid of conflict. We just don't know how to communicate. We just don't know how to communicate with one another. But we got to learn how to communicate with one another, not communicate about one another, because we're masters at that. We're geniuses at communicating about people, but we're not good at communicating to people. Oh, we can talk about somebody all day, but we can't talk to them. So, you see, it takes a unique anointing. Anybody that's watching me right now, you anointed to confront somebody you got a problem with. You ain't got to go around, around the the uh, uh, ring around the rosy you can confront them straight on you can confront them straight head on you ain't got you ain't got to go calling around and start dogging them out look if i got a problem where i can go go right to you look tap me tap them on the shoulder anybody got that tap on the shoulder ministry hey hey let, let's deal with this let's talk about this and that's what Proverbs 17 and 17. It, it, a friend loves at all times. And if you got a real friend, you can get through conflicts. Oh God. Because you got love. Because you got love. If you got a real friend, you can get through conflict because there is love there. And the Bible says love covers a multitude of faults. Not only a multitude of faults, but it covers every conflict. It covers every issue. It covers every disagreement. Somebody say amen. And a brother is born out of for adversity so when you go through things the relationship gets stronger when you have conflicts and you conquer it when you go through stuff and you had a disagreement the relationship gets stronger when you conquer it and now you gain a brother listen now we're gonna go to the Word of God I want to go to Psalms the 20 the 56 Psalm verse 5 and this is for about five people in your life you got about five people in your life that's just like this well maybe that's just me but i know you got at least one psalms 56 56 psalm verse 5 watch this all day long they distort my words all their thoughts are against me for evil now, there are some people that no matter what you say, no matter how you say it, no matter when you say it, no matter where you say it, 
they are going to have a disagreement with you. They are going to have a problem with you. There are some people who are anointed to twist your words. Oh Lord, help me tonight. Oh, I know, I know some of y'all might be around people like that right now. I know I got some folk that are watching right now. You can say one thing and they twist your words to fit them so they can stay mad at you. Some people are gifted at twisting what you say. They'll distort your words. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Anybody know somebody like that? No matter what you say, they got a problem. No matter what you do, they got a problem. No matter how you fix it, you, you know, you can say it as, as nice and kind and as loving as you want. You can say it with a smile on your face, but they are just a disagreeable, uh, uh, what's the word? Disagreeable, bitter, uh, contrary person. And you can't, there are some folks you can't, you just can't make peace with. That's why the Bible gave us this clause. Have peace with all men if it be possible. If it be possible. Some folks make it impossible because they have a stubborn mind. Their mind is so stubborn that, that they want to, even if you ain't did nothing wrong, they want to create something wrong that you've done to them to justify their actions against you. Oh, yes. They want to create something. That's why people, that's why a liar won't tarry in his sight. That's why people make up lies. They make up tales and make up all kinds of stories against you just to justify their actions against you you trying to be nice you trying to get past it and after trying five six seven eight nine ten times and they still want to twist your words they still want to turn what you say that's why the bible said don't let your good be evil spoken of sooner or later you're going to have to treat them a different kind of way oh yeah well, I'm, a, I, I'm staying in the Word of God today. I, 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 want, I want to help you through the Word of God. And, and I'm going to show you in the Word of God. I am going to show you in the Word of God what God's Word says regarding this. I'm going to show you what God's Word says regarding this. And it's going to blow your mind. I'm going to show you what God's Word says regarding this. Amen. And we need to learn this in the church. We got to learn this in the church house because it's in the church house where people will twist your words. I, you can, the pastor can say one thing over, and somebody on that side of the church heard this, somebody on that side of the church heard that, and they twist it. Oh, I, I, I've had people twist my words. I'm like, good God, did I say that? Sometimes people lie so good on you, you got to go back and remind, you got to ask yourself I, wait, did I, did I say that? Did I, I don't remember that. Some folks are anointed to lie on you. They are anointed to twist your words. And you cannot make peace if somebody already has an ought against you in their mind and they are creating different situations in their mind against you for evil some folks you ain't done nothing to oh lord let me let me help somebody for about three minutes there are some folks that you ain't did a thing to you ain't did nothing to them but they got an ought against you my God. Let me show you in the word of God. We're going to the word of God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Come on, Minister Fisher. They have a cantankerous spirit. And when, you have a, when you're dealing with somebody that has a cantankerous spirit, you can't resolve anything with them. They, have, they are a stubborn people. You know what stubborn is? That means you can't even, nothing penetrates their brain. No, they can't even think. 
it, it won't even penetrate. You can talk to them any kind, nice way. You can text it. You can write a letter. You can send a bird signal. Woo, 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 and they won't understand. They, they, they have a mindset to not understand. They don't want resolution. They thrive in conflict. I call them messy folks. Uh, I'm about to say something. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you. Leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled with that to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. Oh, let me help somebody. What is your sacrifice? Well, singing, preaching. Whatever you're doing in the house of God, ushering, uh, serving, all of these things are sacrifices that we give into the temple. If you are getting ready to give your sacrifice into the temple, whatever you do in the temple, and you remember that someone has an ought against you, not that you have an ought against someone, but you remember that someone has an order against you. You go to that person. Leave your gift. Don't, don't, don't operate until you fix that issue. God Almighty. Don't operate until you resolve that conflict. But I didn't do nothing. I, didn't, I know you didn't do nothing. But God said this is how we are supposed to operate. But they got a problem with me. Yes. So you go to them and resolve that conflict before you can give any sacrifice to God. Oh, Lord have mercy. I know, I know it's tough. I, I, I know, I know. Because I, I know we do the best we can with folk. I, I know, I know we're doing the best we can with folks. But this is what the Bible says. And I know some of y'all in your spirit and said, nah, I ain't with that. I, it's cool. This ain't my opinion. I'm not really with it neither. But I got to do what the Bible says. So if someone has an ought against me, and I know they have an ought against me, I have to go to them. Hey, man, we good? You all right? Hey, sis, you all right over there? We good? We straight? And when you go to them, and then, you know, this is what people do. Yeah, we good. Even though they ain't, you've done your part. When you go to them and you try to make peace, and they give you the cold shoulder, you've done your part. So don't let nobody cripple you in ministry because they got a problem with you. Good God Almighty. Woo! I want, I want you to just say this. I, I, I want you to just say this in your home. Say this in wherever you are, wherever you may be right now. Tell them, say I ain't got a problem with nobody. I want you, and I want you to really mean it. I ain't got a problem with nobody. I don't have time to have little church beef because I got too high of a calling on my life to be beefing with folks in and out. I don't have a time. I don't have the time for a little gossip beef, beef in church. This is the house of God. I ain't got time for all that stuff. If you got a problem with me, let me know what it is. Let's try to resolve it. If you want to keep your problem with me, keep it. I'm good. There's so many people that need this word tonight. Don't worry, I'm going to put it on YouTube. We're going to be on Instagram. Amen, somebody. <clears throat> Let me go to this. We get ready to get out of here. And, and, and a lot of people, <clears throat> they try to get up and minister through these conflicts. Minister through these problems. 
how can you sing on the choir and give that sacrifice? Because whenever you're singing on the choir, singing on the, pre, on, the, on, on the praise team, preaching God's word, it ain't about the, you're doing that for God. You're doing that unto God. And how can you do that unto God and you got issues with folks? That's why some folks don't want certain folks to pray for them on the altar. How are you going to pray for me on the altar, but you got an issue with me? How are you going to sing praise and worship to me and you got an issue with me? How are we going to sing on the choir in the same section together but you got a problem with me and I know it and I got a problem with you and you know it? How can we continue to do ministry without resolving conflicts? Well, I just stay on my side and they stay on that side. No, the devil is a liar. Resolve that conflict. Be bold enough to go to somebody and apologize. Even in our own personal homes, walking around the house not talking, uh, your house ain't but so big, and walking around not talking and just walking past. Resolve that issue. Create peace in that atmosphere. The devil is a liar. We got to learn how to resolve conflicts as people of God. We ain't dudes on the corner. We ain't busters sitting on the stoop. We the, we're the children of God. We're God's people. We got to learn how to resolve conflict. There's no reason 40% of divorces in the, in the Christian community are going on. 40 to 50%. You can't resolve. You a child of God? You can't resolve little minute issues. Now somebody beating on you and, uh, and, and cheating all that stuff, that's something different. But other little stuff, come on. We got to learn how to resolve conflicts. We got to learn how to communicate with one another. All right. Matthew chapter 18. And again, these are tough scriptures that even people from the, from the bishop down to the custodian, we know the word of God, but some scriptures, be honest, we got a problem with. There, there's some scriptures we still struggle with. I love the Lord, but there's some scriptures that still, you know, I'm going to do it because the word says so, but my flesh want to do something else. Get out your flesh and get in the spirit. Matthew 18, verse 15 through 17. Matthew 18, verse 15 through 17. Watch this. I'm reading the New Living Translation. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again. So that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If the person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector all right somebody I, I need somebody to say break it down pastor break it down let me break this down let me let me help somebody with this right now first of all we're not talking about worldly folks I'm not talking about your agreement with somebody that's not saved that's why the Bible said if another believer sins against you so if another believer sins against you the Bible says go privately to that person. That means tap them on the shoulder, go somewhere and have a conversation. That's the first thing you do. Go privately to that person. You don't confront them openly. 
Now we're not talking about, see, we get scriptures all, all confused. We're not talking about open rebuke. We're not talking about that right now. Right now we're talking about conflict with your brother and your sister. Go privately to them. That's the word of God. And then it says, if they say to you, if they confess it. Because sometimes you go privately to somebody and you say, yo, you did what you're doing. What's up with that? And they'll say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. My bad. I don't know what was wrong with me that day, but that's on me. My bad. Let's get past that. Boom. If they do that, you have gained a friend forever. But if they don't hear you and they know they're wrong, then the Bible says, go bring one or go get two or three witnesses. Bring somebody else. So when you go to them, your words can't be twisted. God, I love you. I'm trying to teach somebody how to deal with some stuff with the saints. Go to them with one, two, or three witnesses. Not for them, not for you all to bombard them. Because when you're going to them, the people you're bringing with them ain't saying nothing. They're just listening to the conversation so they can bear witness of what you said and what their response was. You ain't going ganging up on nobody. Oh, come on. Yeah, we all got beef. No. See, that's the problem in the church. You get two or three people. You done told them the story already. And now you're going to somebody with beef. The Bible haven't even got to tell the church yet. That's why so, things, so many things go wrong in the house of God. Because we do it backwards. We don't go to the person first privately. We go to everybody else. And then we create everybody else uh, uh, we create something in everybody else's spirit against somebody now you got people not liking somebody because of what you told them that you shouldn't have even told them you should have told the person first but we do it wrong in the church we get on the phone and say you know what such and such did you know what such so and so said and that's not what the bible said to do oh I know I know I know so you take two or three with you, then you go. Just so they can listen. Them two or three ain't got nothing to say. Learn to go and just be a witness. You, I'm talking to you. Learn to just go be a witness, a listening ear. So then if they don't hear you, then after taking it to two or three people, then the Bible says, take it to the church. Now the church knows about the conflict. And if they don't hear the entire church, and they still can't see they're wrong, the Bible declares that you ought to treat them like a pagan and a tax collector, a corrupt tax collector. You know what you do with a corrupt tax collector? You run from them. You avoid them. You have no communication with them. You, 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 don't, you don't go out to eat with them. You don't hang with them. You separate. You separate the time. That's how the Bible said to do it. But we, yes, we, the church, and I'll name some churches right here at Grace, Washington Temple, New Life Tabernacle, Pleasant Grove, First Baptist of Crown High, Christ Fellowship, whatever church. Because this is not a one building problem. This is a problem in churches worldwide. We don't know how to address conflict church up the street that church down there unity uh, Rehoboth uh, Pleasantville uh, uh, Berea, all, this is something that we as the church as a whole need to grasp we do it backwards we do it backwards we we don't go to the person privately first we start going to people on the pews. 
you know, yeah, I, I know you saw that, right? You saw that, right? You saw that, right? You saw that, right? You, you, you saw that, right? You heard that, right? You see, and, and, and you, now you create, and that's why so many people got arts against folks that ain't did nothing to them. You got an art against somebody because of what somebody told you about them. It might not even be true. Jesus, I'm just trying to help somebody. I'm just trying to help somebody along the way because we cut folks off before. Some folks cut you off before they even went to you privately. And then months down the road, yo, we used to be cool. What, what happened? Oh, don't act like you don't know. What do you mean don't act like I don't know? You know what you did. Did you ever tell me what I did? No, I didn't tell you, but you know. And folks are so tough until it's time to confront. People are so tough until it's time to confront somebody. And I'm reminded of this. I remember I was in school and, you know, we were talking, um, don't smoke, don't smoke, you know, when all that stuff came about. And then I found out that secondhand smoke is just as bad as smoking a cigarette yourself. Amen. And some of us have secondhand problems with folks. You ain't got the problem with them. Somebody else got the problem with them and the aura got on you. And that's just as bad. Because now you got a problem with somebody that <coughs> they ain't do nothing to you. And guess what? You can get cancer from secondhand smoke too. This needs to be addressed. You know how many, and this is, this is another reason, God, I love you. This is another reason because we don't know how to resolve conflicts. So many churches keep getting started. Somebody got to pastor another church because they had a disagreement with that pastor. So, and they cannot reason, they cannot come to them. So they done told half the church what happened instead of going to the leader and dealing with it. Now you got half the church feeling a way about the pastor. You start your own church and take half the church with you. And then the same spirit that's on you is with the people that followed you. So now somebody going to rise up in your little crew and do the same thing to you. They're going to have an art with you and now they're going to tell half the church that you took from somebody else's church and they're going to have an art against you and then they're going to go and take half your people and go start another church and then they carry the same spirit as that one. And then they're going to go and start the, that's why there's 137,000 churches on Fulton Street and I know God has called some but some of these churches have started because somebody got mad all right hallelujah we got to develop conflict resolution skills. Listen, people don't leave, and don't let nobody tell you no mess like that. People don't leave the church because the Spirit of God is not there anymore. No, people leave churches because of problems with people. I'm, I'm, I've been pastoring for 13 years. I've been in church for 50 years, and I'm 44 years old come next month. People don't leave the church because they're mad at God. People, most people leave the church because they have a problem with somebody, and it could not be resolved. And by the time we try to resolve it, it's too late. Because too much damage has been done because there wasn't enough private conversation. There was not enough tap on the shoulder. Let's reason together. Let's talk about this. And as believers, God, I love you. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. As believers, we are 
binded by this word. We must do it the way God said to do it. We'll just stop talking to a person. We'll just stop saying, we, we, we'll just stop communicating with a person. And then, you know, because, you know, leaders, pastors all over the country, they know who's cool with who, and then they see a little separation. Like, like yo, they used, to, they used to come to church together. Now they don't come to church together no more. You know, ain't being nosy, but, but you know, what's, what's going on? Everybody all right? Oh, she know what she did. He know what he did. But you got to go to them. Because, listen, some people may have offended you and don't know they have. Some, yes, there are some that do it and are, are, are vindictive. They do it purposely. But there are some people that may have offended you mistakenly. And you took it as government. You took it as law. You took it as what it is. And then you start spreading it. And we got to learn, can I tell you something? We got to learn how, the first place you learn how to deal with conflict is in your home. In your house. We got to learn, if we deal with conflict in our home, because conflict come up in the house too. So if you're able to deal with it in your home, you can deal with it at anywhere else. You, ain't, you, gonna have, you deal with conflict at your job. Oh, you go to the supervisor and have a meeting in the supervisor's office about what's going on at the job. And you know why? The supervisor ain't going to have no atmosphere where they can't flourish, where the business can't grow, where the business can't do what it needs to do. So they, gonna, you, they got to resolve that thing. But if you can, then the Bible says, after you've done those three things, to walk away, to avoid them. Amen? All right. Listen. Let me go to Philippians 2 and 5. I, I got to close this thing out. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. And this is one of my favorite scriptures. It's one of my favorite scriptures in the whole world, in the whole Bible. It says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And then it also says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. And we got, we got chains and all kinds of things that say, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus resolve this? What would Jesus do? Well, I got news for you what Jesus would do. Jesus would resolve it like the word of God. Jesus was not afraid to go to a person and address it. We got to have the mind of Christ. Jesus even said, go to them, say what you got to say. And if they don't hear you, wipe the dust off your shoulders. But we can't wipe the dust off our shoulders first and then just go about our way. You got to... Do something, to deal with the conflict, and then wipe the dust off your shoulders. And I believe God is getting ready to give that spirit of love, that spirit of Christ, back into the house of God. Where If we have a problem with someone, we're going to go to them. We're going to deal with them. We're going to do this thing better in this next season. We've been through too much. People die. We've seen so many people dying in the last two years. We've been through too much. And so many people wish. See, you don't want to have that bitter feeling after somebody has gone on to be with the Lord and then say, oh, I wish I could have, I wish I had time to get it right. I wish I had time to, to deal with that. I wish I had time. Somebody need to deal with something in their family. If they don't hear you, fine. If you've done your part, fine. But please, people of God, do your part as a believer. God wants to bless us like crazy. And I'm telling you, it's so many little small things that are holding us up. There's so many little minute things that are stopping us from great blessings. 
Look, some of us got kids, grandkids. We don't want to, God to hinder our blessing that can be passed on down to us because we got an ought against somebody. Somebody got a look. I got kids to raise. I got time to be worried about no little kitty aughts. I got children that I need God to bless. anointed to preach we're already anointed to teach we're anointed to play the instruments we're anointed to sing we can outshout anybody we're worshipers but have you learned how to deal with conflict that's what I want to pray tonight God help me to deal with we're going to pray this together. Father God, I pray right now, tonight, on this Tuesday night, that you touch the people of God right now. From the east to the west, from the north to the south. And give us wisdom on how to deal with conflict. Give us wisdom on how a disagreement and still love give us godly wisdom on how to go to someone who has offended us give us godly wisdom on how to go to someone who we've offended make apologizing easy again God make apology easy again Make forgiveness easy, God. Help us, Lord. We need you. We've been trained a whole nother way. Our families may have trained us wrong. Our communities may have trained us wrong. Our hoods may have brought us up in the wrong way. But we want to do things as believers. I know we were born into that family, but we've been born again into the household of believers. So we now desire to deal with conflict, not like we're from East New York, not like we're from Flatbush, not like we're from Brownsville, but we want to deal with conflict as if we are children of the Most High God. Touch us now, God. Touch our attitudes now. Touch our self-righteous ways now. Help us to make it right. Let the Holy Ghost work in us like it should. Let the Holy Spirit dwell in us like it should. Let the fruits of the Spirit really show. In the name of Jesus, we bind that backbiting spirit now. We bind that spirit of contrariness now. We bind that cantankerous spirit now. And God, we turn our attitudes over to you turn our ways over to you and if anyone has an order against us God we want to do our part forgive us as we forgive those that trespass against us and it is so in Jesus name come on somebody give God glory for the word of God hallelujah listen I feel the presence of the Lord through this message. I feel that God is, whew, God, I feel you. I feel that God is going to do something, not just in this house, but in your house. He's going to do something. No longer will your family be separated because of a conflict. It happened. Let's deal with it. Come on. It happened. Let's talk about it. It happened. Let's, let's work through it. Yeah, yeah, it happened. Yeah, it hurt. Let's deal with it head on. Let's sit down. Let's go have a cup of tea. 
and some some G lights cupcakes. Let's deal with this thing so we can get past it. Listen, I, I want you to say this, and we can ready to go. I, I just want you to say this in the comments. Just say, let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Come on, let's deal with it. Somebody gonna see that and it's gonna strike something up in them and they're gonna go to somebody that had a problem with them or somebody that they had a problem with and God is gonna restore some relationships. God is gonna restore some friendships. God is gonna restore some marriages. God is gonna restore it. Come on, I want you to just say, let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Hallelujah. I love the Lord and I love you listen I want everybody that can sow a $50 seed you're watching from wherever you're watching I want you to sow a $50 seed tonight on this word there's 10 people that are going to do that seed if this word blessed you and you have that $50 seed I want you to sow it the cash app I don't know if it's on the bottom of the screen the cash app is dollar sign new grace tab and the zell is pastor dave 14 at gmail.com and the paypal is pastor dave 14 at gmail.com we want you to sow that seed You might not have had that $50 seed, but you have a $20 seed. I want you to sow that seed right now. Somebody has a $10 seed. Everybody can needs to the $10 seed. Even if you're watching the replay, I want you to sow that $10 seed right now. Sow that seed right now. God bless you. I see the seeds coming in. I see the seeds coming in. God bless you. Sow the seeds into the house of God. Sow the seeds into the man of God. I'm telling you, God is going to allow us the strength to deal with conflicts. I know it. I know it. We ain't going to shout over conflicts, but we can shout over it. But when you finish shouting, the conflict is still there. We're going to deal with these conflicts. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Sow that seed, sow that seed, sow that seed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the seeds that you're sowing. We thank you for every seed that you've sown. Amen. God bless you. Listen, we will be in service on Sunday. Don't forget we have prayer on Friday night. And we'll be in service on Sunday. I got some good news for our building, for our renovation. I got some great news for you. On this week, the inspector is coming to inspect all the work that has been done. And they are going to close out our permit prayerfully this week. I believe we've done everything up to code. Looks like everything is up to code. Our contractor, our head architect has been here. The engineer is coming in this week. And I thank God because looks like by the end of this week, our project will be, the permit will be closed out. And now we can deal with the next part, dealing with the fines and all that stuff. But I'm so glad that God has blessed us. We still have some bills to pay. We still owe some people, but we're going to get it all done. And I thank God for all of your faithful support and all of your faithful giving. Listen, we're getting ready to go. God bless you. I hope to see you on Sunday. We're going to come here and give God glory, praise, and honor. Again, happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. God has brought us from a mighty long way. If you're traveling, I pray that you get home safe. Thank you for tuning in to New Grace Tabernacle, Bible study, conflict resolution. Share it with somebody. Remember those scriptures, and may God be with you. God bless you. We love you. Peace. Huge happy birthday shout out to my baby boy. 
Jai is 16 years old today. That ought to make you feel old because some of y'all remember when he was born. And if you want to be a special blessing to Jai Wright, I'm going to put his cash app there. Jai's cash app is Jai, dollar sign Jai Wright 3. If anybody wants to be a special blessing, I thank God for his faithfulness as a musician. And he's a good son. He don't give us no trouble except for cleaning his room every now and then. But other than that, Jai is a good boy. We love that young man. He's the baby of the church. Amen. So happy birthday, Jai. I know you're watching. You want to be a witness.